Hey, welcome to this fifth lesson in my Ghost Note series. Um, I'm Sean Ludlow, and if this is the first time you've seen me, then I think you should go and check out the previous videos in this series in the description below. Um, so this lesson is about linear grooves and step hi-hat grooves. For those of you unfamiliar with linear drumming, it's essentially when no two notes are played at the same time in its purest form. There are many different genres and different drummers that use linear drumming. Um, one example of a drummer that uses linear drumming is Jeff Porcaro, who uh, is the drummer for Toto. And we covered the, the song Rosanna, which is a great example of linear drumming, in the previous episode in this series. David Garibaldi is also a very famous linear style drummer, who uh, is the drummer of Tower of Power. And the song What is Hip is a great song uh, to listen for linear playing. Uh, also, Steve Gadd, you know, the, the great master of drumming, Steve Gadd, he regularly uses linear drumming and also step hi-hat uh, linear a lot as well. Um, and a good song you can check out for that is 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover by Paul Simon. There are thousands more examples of different songs that use linear drumming. Um, and you can check that out yourself. Go do research uh, and put in the comments different drummers that you find and different song examples that are... Uh, really show linear drumming. Now this lesson is by no means a deep dive into linear drumming. We're just gonna look at some examples of different linear drumming and step hi-hat drumming where we can implement ghost notes and how to do that. But I do recommend you check out the book, Linear Time Playing, Funk and Fusion Grooves for the Modern Styles. Um, it's a great book that really covers loads of different linear stuff. Uh, and if you don't wanna check that out, there is plenty of videos online and books elsewhere that really dive deep into the style of linear drumming. Okay, so this first groove is a very basic example of a linear style groove. Start really slow if you're unfamiliar with linear playing and make sure that your limbs are in the right placements and your timing is precise. Really focus on hitting the accent notes and making sure your ghost notes are nice and quiet. Also, watch out for the jab punch part on beat four. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the jab punch, um, go check out lesson two of this series where I dive a bit deeper into that. Exercise number two is just a slightly more complicated version of number one, as we're now starting with a ghost note on beat one, which is quite difficult to do. We now also have a jab punch on both of the back beats, which again, if you're unfamiliar with that term, check out lesson two in this video series. Here's exercise number two, slow, medium and fast. Now this next one is similar to the last, but we're going to move the accent placement to the art of two and the art of four. So watch out for those.
There are so many variations of linear grooves that you can use. I recommend getting 16th notes and literally just moving the limbs to different, to different surfaces on each one of the 16th notes to create new sounds and find ones that you like the most. Um, you can also move the accent placements around, um, use the kick drum in there as well. Uh, there's so much you can do and there's, there is not enough time for me to go into all of it here. That might be impossible in fact. So do that in your own time. So as well as these strict linear patterns, you can also relax a little bit and implement some non-linear parts within your linear grooves. Exercise number four is a perfect example of that. Again, watch out for where your limbs are meant to go on each beat of the bar and look out for the open hi-hat on the and of beat four. Now make sure those 16th notes are nice and tight and you don't fluctuate in your tempo. This next exercise, exercise number five, is a perfect example of a linear groove that relaxes a little bit on some beats to let two notes hit together. So in this one, it's on beat A uh and the A uh of one where the limbs hit together. We've also added in a few extra accents, so watch out for those, just to make it sound a little bit more interesting. And watch out for beat two, which has a pattern of one ander instead of the full one eander. Remember to keep those ghost notes low and subtle and make those accent notes really stand out. Here it is, slow, medium and fast. Exercise number six is a little more complicated as we're starting with a ghost note on the snare as well as a pedaled hi-hat. The accents on this one are also a little strange. They're on the R uh of one, beat three, beat four, and the R uh of four. As well as those accents, we have open hi-hats on beat three and also on the R uh of four. Here is number six for you. Now that exercise is a little tricky, so don't worry if you don't get it at first. Just remove the extra open hi-hats, maybe some of the accents, uh, and just take it really slow. Okay, so now you have an idea of how to play some linear grooves. We're going to start incorporating a little bit more stepped hi-hat. The trick with using stepped hi-hat, especially when you're playing hi-hat notes with your hand before and after the stepped hi-hat, is to make sure that those stepped hi-hat notes and the, the hi-hat notes with your hands aren't trashy or open. You want them both to sound tight and clean. 
Now, playing this at speed can be very difficult without getting those trashy notes and to make it sound really tight. So start slow and just bump up your tempo by 5 BPM at a time until you're at a speed where you can follow along with the following. Okay, so now you have your left foot working in line with the rest of your hands, we should add some more bass drum in there to make it sound a bit more interesting. This is exactly what exercise 8 does, so follow along. Now this next exercise, which is the final exercise, number nine, implements all the skills we've used so far, but just makes it a little bit more advanced. And like I said before, there are so many more linear patterns out there in different ways of playing that you should explore in your own time. Watch out for the slightly different accent pattern in this groove. And also, you need to make sure that you look out for the non-linear unison ghost notes, which are on the snare and hi-hat on the E and the and of four and also watch out for the double kick turnaround which is at the end. Here is number 9 for you. Now that you've tried these exercises, go and create your own. And if you find some that you really like, please post them in the comments below or send them to me at my email, ludlowdrumtuition at gmail.com. Or you can post them to my social medias. Um, and some examples of how you can change it is it's not just changing to different surfaces. You can also add in different accent patterns, add different foot patterns, switch between uh, linear drumming and non-linear drumming within the same, same bar. Um, you can also add rudiments within, to your, within your linear playing. There's so many things you can do, and I hope this has just helped inspire you to carry on learning. Let me know what other videos you would like to see me make, and please like and subscribe if you learned anything from this video. Uh, and go check out the previous videos in the series. And again, uh, stay tuned because we have a few more episodes left in this series as well. In the next episode in this series, we're going to be looking into odd time and compound time grooves. Uh, these can be really tricky, but we're going to start nice and simple, so don't worry if you've never played Odd Time before. Um, and share these videos with your drummer friends, because hopefully they'll help them too. See you in the next video.